All right, this fly is made out of uh, this organza material. You can buy this at Walmart. You can buy it at Hobby Lobby. It comes in an inch and a half wide. And for our purposes, I like to use a shorter strip of this. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't start bleeding. Yeah. So you see I've got a short strip of this. And it's too wide, so I am going to cut along each side. Uh, it'll leave a little bit of waste in the middle, but that's okay. And uh, I can get two strips of this out of uh, one piece of this organza. Now, what is... Uh, makes it easier to work with and notice I'm going to cut right against the rib I'm going to cut in oh, a quarter of an inch or, or less on either end and the reason I do that is I'm going to strip out those pieces now that, that are perpendicular to the rib and by cutting that little strip uh, next to that rib, then I can I can pluck out. You can see I've got those out of there. I'm going to do it on the other end. Do the same thing. I'm just going to get those out of the way. And the reason I'm doing this, you'll be able to see in just a minute. Now. The strips that we want to use for this fly are those that are vertical to the, the stem on the outside. All these other that go lengthwise, we're going to have to strip those out. And I'm going to pull those out. At the beginning, you can pull them out a couple or two or three at a time. And they come out very easily. And you can see my what's going to end up being my organza hackle. You can see I'm I'm, I'm getting there. It's a little tedious having to pull these things out, but if you pull one or two at a time, it doesn't take long to get a, a little piece like this ready to go, uh, hackle length, but this is going to work pretty well for the, the size hooks that, that we're using. Now I'm getting pretty close here. I've got another 10 or 12 of these to get out. The ones nearest the uh, rib are always the hardest to get out. Okay, I've got them snagged here now. I've got to... Okay. Okay. Okay, now I've got all those out. And you're going to end up with a piece that looks like this, which is... Hold it straight up. Which is going to be the equivalent of a, Hold it right there. The, the hackle. Hold it. Hold it. Don't move it. I have better luck just pull them out one or two at a time. Okay. Now we got that strip ready to go. Hang on to that. Uh, we have a little work to do before we get to that. I'm going to lay a, a thread base. Do it's critical. You do not crowd the eye on this particular fly. Now I'm just going to lay a thread base here. This is a pretty simple fly once you've got the materials ready. Uh, just three materials that would meet Dave Barfield's test. Okay. But this floss comes in a variety of colors and it comes, one piece of it is four strands, okay? And I have cut those strands so that all you need is one strand of this orange floss. So if it flares on you on the end, wet it a little bit so all those individual filaments aren't fuzzy on you. And I'm going to tie that in. I'm going to go back to maybe just down the bend just a little ways. 
and then I'm going to take my thread back up and I'm going to stop about just about halfway maybe a little bit past but not very far past I'm going to half hitch that so I can get my thread out of the way those of you that have a thread holder all right now I hate floss because it's difficult to work with it wants to spread on you if it starts to spread you're just going to have to give it a twist to get it to get it tight and I'm going to start right there at the bend try to miss my hook and I'm going to try and cover up my thread good I'm going to go up I'm going to end up coming back down because I want a little bit more bulk to the bottom the body than I have right now so if I got a, a little gap right there that's not going to be a big deal now I'm going to go back down I'm going to fill in that body a little bit anybody else found that trout love orange I've got uh, a strike indicator out of some orange kind of floating material and if I could figure out a way to put a hook on that f orange floating material I'd catch a lot more trout that they, they just they'll tear that strike indicator up and you can see some of that is kind of flaring on me a little bit so I'm going to give that a twist tighten it up again and now I'm going to head forward. I've got about all I want at the back end. Now I'm going to start building that body so it gets progressively a little bit thicker. I'm going to go up to the middle. I'm going to go back down. I'm just building it up a little layer at a time. I want the, uh, the build up to be nice and gradual. And uh, since I'm just about to run out of floss, I think that's probably all I'm going to be able to get on there. So I'm going to tie that off. Yeah, you're going to use most of it on a size 10 hook. If you use a smaller hook, you will, you'll get uh, maybe two out of a piece of that floss the way I tied it. Now... I can see I've got some fuzzies here. I'm going to try to get rid of those. They're just going to get in my way. All right. Now you should have a piece of this kind of a rust brown mini chenille. This co chenille comes in a variety of sizes. This is not as small as it comes, but it's pretty close. They have a, they call a micro chenille that's even, even smaller. And remember, we want to strip that thread off the end and then I'm going to tie that end in and then I'm going to go forward tie that half hitch that again get my thread out of the way now the purpose of this chenille is to make a little bit of a thorax on a size 10 hook, you probably don't want more than maybe two, two and a half wraps. There's one. There's two. And there's about two and a half. Notice I've tried to keep it back from the eye. And when I bring my bobbin up, I don't want that chenille to edge forward. I want to keep that little hump right where it is, right in the middle. Then I'm going to trim that. And I'm going to half hitch that as well because I hate it when something starts coming apart. Okay. All right. Now, it's when we use what we prepared earlier. If I can pick up one of these up. Now, that's not what I want. I want this other one here. Well, I gotta reattach. I could have sworn I had that attached the other time. Guess not. Okay, I'm gonna half hitch that again. And 
and I'm going to kind of hold that down to get it started. I want those individual barbs to go backwards. I'm going to bring that around. That's, that's one turn. Okay, I'm going to try and get maybe two turns, and that will probably be about all I'm going to, I'm going to want on there. And then I've got to try and, and hold that up so that I don't trap any more than I really need here until I've got, got those two wraps attached. Then I'm going to trim this. And the, the last step is just forming my head. I want to make sure I've got that sucker attached. I think I do. Okay. Going to get my whip finish out. Finish that up. And this is one fly that, I don't know, it's, it's a pretty little fly. And it, it seems to me that I need maybe uh, to use some head cement on this just so it gives it a little bit more shine. It's not absolutely necessary, especially if you're going to fish it. But I like a little bit of head cement. Oh, I got way too much. And you can see the difference here between a 10 and a 12. They're they're both good looking flies. They're I've caught trout. This is not my go-to fly.